I've got a spot right here, so maybe sit up here. There we go. One, two. We can take two. I'll slide over a bunch. You go right there. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm not in charge of all the seating, so I'm going to ask Miss Williams if where she wants everybody to sit. Everybody good? Yes, everybody. Okay. Are you everybody all happy? Show? We got everybody? Yeah. She got crazy. I know. And you got too. Well, I got to read, so I'm gonna, I need my lap. <laughs> I need my lap. Everybody ready? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to, first of all, um, do something that I heard from so many of you is your favorite thing to do, which is read. And it's so important. And that's why I'm so excited to be here. With, with my best friend and, and partner, the first lady. Um, Back here. There she is. <laughs> so um, we're going to read a book called The Story of Ferdinand, otherwise Ferdinand. otherwise known as Ferdinand the Bull. Um, all right, everybody ready? Yep. I'm going to go a little bit like this so you and I can get to see where it goes. OK, sorry about that. Um, in fact, you can help me hold it. There we go. The Story of Ferdinand. OK. Everybody ready? Yeah. All right. Once upon a time in Spain, which is a country on the other side of the ocean, there was a little bull, and his name was Spain. Ferdinand. <laughs> he lived in Spain, which is the country. His name's Ferdinand. Everybody see him? Okay. You doing all right? All the other little bulls he lived with would run and jump and butt their heads together. Isn't that funny? Let me hold it up here. So I'm trying. Here we go. Put it back up. Here we go. There we go. Yeah. But not Ferdinand. Everybody see it? Okay. So he was a There you go. He liked to sit just quietly and smell the flowers. He likes, he likes peace and quiet with my parents. He likes peace and quiet. He had a favorite spot out in the pasture under a cork tree. That's his favorite spot. It was his favorite tree, and he would sit in its shade and all day smell the flowers. Sometimes his mother who was a cow, a cow, a cow, it's a bull's mom, is a cow, would worry about him. She was afraid he would be lonesome all by himself. Why don't you run and play with the other little bulls and skip and butt your heads, she would say. But Ferdinand would shake his head. I like it better here where I can sit just quietly and smell the flowers and think. I bet he was doing a lot of thinking. His mother saw that he was not lonesome and because she was an understanding mother, even though she was a cow, she let him just sit there and be happy. Here we go. As the years went by, Ferdinand grew and grew until he was very big and strong. Look how big Ferdinand's got. He's a cow. He, well, he's a big bull now. <laughs> All the other bulls who had grown up with him in the same pasture would fight each other all day. They would butt each other and, and stick each other with their horns what did that mean that some of them would be very injured? Well, maybe, they're, maybe they didn't hurt each other, but they bumped into each other a lot. And what they wanted most of all was to be picked to fight at the bullfights in Madrid. But not Ferdinand. He still liked to sit just quietly under the cork tree and smell the flowers. So he just, so he just sat there for about for like five years? We'd go every day and sit there. This is one of my favorites. Yeah. One day, five men came in very funny hats to pick the biggest, fastest, roughest bull 
to fight in the bullfights in Madrid. They Who do you they think they're going to pick? They're going to pick Ferdinand. Ferdinand. Yeah. All the other bulls ran around snorting and, and biting, leaping and jumping so that the men would think that they were the very, very strongest and fiercest and would pick them. Ferdinand knew that they wouldn't pick him and he didn't care. So he went out to his favorite cork tree to sit down. He didn't look where he was sitting and, and instead of sitting on the nice cool grass in the shade, he sat on a, a bumblebee. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> well, if you were a bumblebee and a bull sat on you, what would you do? Yeah, you would sting him. And that is just what the bee did to Ferdinand. Wow, did it hurt. Ferdinand jumped up with a snort and he ran around puffing and snorting and butting and pawing the ground as if he were crazy. Well, the five men saw him and they all shouted with joy. Here was the largest and fiercest bull of all. Oh, no. Just the one for the bullfights in Madrid. Poor Ferdinand. Excuse me, uh, that's how. When he gets too much crazy, he thinks he's fearless. Yeah, I think he is. So they, they took him away for the bullfight day in a cart. What a day it was. Flags were flying. Bands were playing. And all the lovely ladies had flowers in their hair. And they had a parade into the bull ring. First came the bandoleros. Is he playing the person? Well, we'll see. I think he's going to like the flowers in the hair better, is my view. But we'll have to wait and see. First came the bandoleros with the long, sharp pins with ribbons on them to stick the bull and make him mad. Next came the, the picadores who rode skinny horses and they had long spears. Then came the matador, the proudest of all. He thought he was very handsome and he bowed to the ladies. He had a red cape and a sword and was supposed to stick the bull with the sword to make him mad. Then came the bull and you know who that was, don't you? Yeah. Who was it? Ferdinand. They called him Ferdinand the Fierce, and all the banderos were afraid of him, and the picaderos were afraid of him, and the matador was scared, stiff. And Ferdinand ran to the middle of the ring, and everyone shouted and clapped because they thought he was going to fight fiercely, and butt and snort and stick out his horns. But not Ferdinand. When he got to the middle of the ring, he saw the flowers in all the lovely ladies' hair, and he just sat down quietly and smelled. He wouldn't fight and be fierce no matter what they did. He just sat and smelled, and the banderos were mad, and the picadors were, were madder, and the matador was so mad he cried because he couldn't show off with his cape and sword. So they had to take Ferdinand home. And for all I know, he is sitting there still under his favorite cork tree, smelling the flowers just quietly. And he is very happy. Did a great job. That was really good. Ferdinand the Bull. So I want to thank everybody for reading with me. Um, I think the chance to sit here and read together with friends is such a great, great thing. And I always want to encourage everybody to read as much as you can. And I want to thank all of our great teachers and tutors and leaders who are here uh, reading with us. Can you all say thank you? Thank you. Thank you. There's just an amazing moment for us to read. And it's so important. You know, there's some friends here as well from an organization called Community in Schools. And they are helping every day all over Petersburg. 
And it's so exciting because that's just part of the school family. And they're here to help as well. So we've got, we've got a lot of fun reading to do going forward. And one of the things that I'm excited about is working with Dr. Sterling and Principal Williams and all the friends. We're going to read even more. Uh, and therefore, there's going to be more books to read and there's going to be more time to read with friends. And reading, at the end of the day, is really important. And so with that, I want to thank all of you as we do as much reading as we can. And I just want to stop for a minute and I want to thank the administrators. I want to thank the leaders from Petersburg Schools. I want to thank Principal Williams and everybody who's here. And, uh, and Dr. Sterling, if you want to share a few comments with us while we're all here, we'd love to hear from you. And you know what? She's, she's the boss of all the bosses. <laughs>